Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about Topaz Labs Video AI and how we can get the best results for our renders. So if you want to check out this program, it is free to check out. It does come with a watermark. I have a link in the description that is an affiliate link. It is not a sponsored video or anything like that. It's uh, just a link that I have that helps me out if you guys use it. If I paid for my sub or my license myself, I didn't get any sort of discount or anything like that. It's just a program that I found to be really useful. So let's take a look at some different things here. Let's go ahead and drop in a set of files here. So this is one of my more recent renders. Take a look at this to start off with. So the settings that I found that kind of work the best, there's a few different models in here. Let's go ahead and just go with the upscaling. So you go to upscale to 4K. This is a 1080p render, I believe. I think this one was 1080p. And we have a few different models here that do some different things. You can use them all to upscale. They give you different results. But the two ones that I used, I would use most are gonna be the Proteus and then the Gaia. So the Gaia, Gaia model is just straight for upscaling video and then the Proteus also does a couple of other things. So this will actually change the look of your renders. So if you don't want that, then I wouldn't use this Proteus. You can go with this Gaia and it actually has a CG setting here. And I don't want it to add any noise. I don't want any grain or anything like that. I pretty much just want to stick with the same settings that we had, the same thing that we had before. I just want to upscale it. So we can go ahead and click this preview and it's going to go ahead and start to calculate out our, our upscaled render. So with this render, there's a few things that I want to touch on. One of those being the way that it actually goes about upscaling. So it's similar to pretty much any other upscaling. It just uses AI to do a little bit better job. So it's gonna take a pixel. So say like this pixel right here, it would take a pixel in here. It's going to stretch it out. So 4K is four times 1080p. So stretch it out to four different pixels, but the way it interpolates between them is this kind of, between the two pixels. So the pixel right next to it and the pixel that it is stretching out, it's going to actually kind of interpolate between the two. So we can do a couple things that are gonna clean up the render just a little bit. So if we go ahead and just play this back now that it's finished, you see we get a decent result here, just upscale to 4K. If we zoom in real close here, and this probably won't come out super well on YouTube, but if we zoom in real close, we get a little bit of this little flickering going on here in the background. And the reason for that is because if we look over on this side, you see this noise pattern is changing. I don't know if this is coming through very well on YouTube, but this noise pattern over here is changing and it's changing over here as well. So it's been denoised over here, but it's still there. So we get a little bit of flickering. Let's see, maybe I can find a better spot where it actually shows up a little bit more. Now it's kind of just in this shadows back here is where you see it the most. And in the background right here, you see a little bit of flickering going on. And like I said, the reason for that is because the noise pattern is actually changing with every single frame, which is typical for any sort of camera that you're using uh, in your renders. Typically you're going to render out with a different noise pattern. But if we go ahead and bring up Houdini here, we have our Redshift ROP right here. And we can actually come in here, we can come over to this little Redshift tab, and we can come down and we have this little checkbox that says random noise pattern. And we can go ahead and uncheck that and it'll give us the same noise pattern, which should help with some of that flickering. So if we go back to Video AI here, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in the second video, which is rendered out with the same noise pattern. I'm gonna to go to the exact same uh, settings. This one was rendered at 720p, so a little, little bit different in that sense, but shouldn't make it too much of a difference here with the, the actual noise pattern. So let's go ahead and click preview. Let's let this calculate, and we'll take a look at it when it's done. But while it is calculating, let's go ahead and jump on over to Resolve. So I wanted to touch on one thing that you would wanna keep an eye out for. One thing that you 
would maybe run into depending on what you're trying to do and that would be if you are trying to just slow down your video so you have the available options to actually slow it down in topaz labs and this is this little clip right here is slowed down to four times so it was a lot slower if i go ahead and i press play it's moving real slow it's a lot faster than this in the actual render but if i zoom along here towards the end and if i zoom in here and we take a look kind of slowly you see we get some artifacting some real weird artifacting going on here so you got to be careful with what you're doing with topaz labs because if it doesn't have enough information to calculate the, and interpolate between frames it's going to create some issues that, like what you see here now, i also was i wasn't able to replicate it but i do remember upscaling one time i think it was from like a 480p render I was upscaling it and I got some real harsh jagged edges on some of the reflections. So just keep an eye out for that type of thing. Don't try to upscale too far because if it doesn't have enough information to actually calculate the, the pixels around it, it's going to kind of struggle and create some artifacts that aren't going to look very good. And if you really push the slow motion, you're going to run into a lot more issues. So let's go ahead and press play back here in the Topaz Labs and take a look at this with the same frame. So like I said, this is just upscaled. This is no denoising going on. But if I go ahead and look here, we don't have any of that flickering that's going on in the background. Now I rendered this out, maybe not at a, a high enough denoise strength, I guess, or like a, a low enough noise threshold that we get rid of some of the, the noise back here. But in all honesty, we could just add some noise on top of this. So typically when you're when you're going through and rendering out any sort of CG stuff, you're gonna be adding some, some grain back into it. And we actually have an option for that here. But if we get the cleanest result from the start and when we go into comp, we can add in that noise. So we no longer have this flickering that's going on because it's the same noise pattern. You see, this doesn't change at all. There's no change in here either. And you can actually go and you can export this out and then you can bring it back in and you can change over to one of these other things. So like this Artemis, one of these other AI models, and we can denoise this and run it through a second time where we just do a denoise pass if we want. We can also, like I said, add in a grain. So maybe this is probably, I haven't really messed around with the grain too much because I would probably do this in post. But let's go ahead and set this to maybe like two. And let's preview what this does. See if this gives us a decent result. That should add, like I said, some noise back into us. Just kind of give us a little bit of uh, that that noise that unified look back to the actual render but like i said this is something that i would do in post instead of actually in the software but it does actually do a pretty decent job and you can change around all the different settings in here and let's see if this is coming across very well so kind of hard to to tell uh because it was a little noisy from the start but there is some some noise going on just uh, the size is a little bit small, probably not coming across very well on YouTube, but this is kind of the, the workflow that I would use. I would go through, I'm gonna turn off that random noise pattern inside of Redshift, get the cleanest result that I can. I would probably lower the noise threshold even further so that we have a, a cleaner image here from the start. And then when I go and actually upscale it, we can have that flickering be non-existent that you're seeing. So the, the flickering is coming from that random noise pattern in your actual render. So it looks a little weird, creates some, some weird things. And actually, it's interesting that this does a better job of that cleanup than this with the, the same noise pattern. I'm guessing that's because it's able to detect it a little bit better with it being a, a random noise pattern. So you can either crank that super, super low or just get rid of that uh, random noise pattern and then run it through a couple different times when one 
with the upscale and then maybe one with that denoise model and get some some good results either way it gives you some some pretty decent results this right here even without that the random noise pattern with it being full screen you're probably not going to notice it too much and that didn't actually this is uh that was just the raw not really gonna notice it too much you don't really see that you have to zoom in pretty far and even at this this level of detail you're not really seeing it too much so just play around with the different settings and like i said you can go in here and use some different presets you can come in and change the fps so if you wanted to crank up the fps to like 120 frames per second you can do that it does a pretty good job of going from 25 or 24 all the way up to 60 fps i haven't really tried to push it past that uh, it's i don't have a need to render up to 90 frames a second but that's something that you can do as well. I also don't use the, the motion de blur or the stabilization. Those are more for like video, I would say, but uh, I guess they could be useful if you just cranked up your motion blur too much or something, I don't know, but I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't mess with those too much. And then this frame interpolation is kind of where you do your slowdown. So you can do slow motion. You can go all the way up to 16X, which uh, like I said, if you crank this up too much, and you don't have enough frames going on, you're gonna have a hard time calculating the interpolation between those frames. So I definitely wouldn't go to 16X. I would maybe go up to 4X if you had, maybe if you maybe if you rendered it out to 60 FPS, you could go up to you know six or eight, maybe even 10, but I wouldn't go all the way up to that 16X. That's pushing it very, very far. And if you really wanted to, you can, run, like I said, run it through multiple times. You can slow it down. And then once you've slowed it down, if you run it through slow motion at 2x, you export it out. And then you run it back through, you can, you'll have twice as many frames, right? So you'll be able to get that interpolation a little bit better now. It is going to be then interpolating frames based off of frames that it's already interpolated so you could get some weird results with that as well but overall i think it would do a pretty decent job definitely does a decent job with the upscale and then the denoise or maybe you even want to run it back through a proteus like i said this this model will change the look of your image a little bit so just be wary of that but overall it does a very very good job and all of these different settings do a decent job they just give you slightly different results depending on which ones you choose so play around with them see which one works best for your particular situation it goes pretty fast i mean you saw 30 seconds and we're upscaled to a 4k so pretty cool there but like i said if you want to check out the program it is free to check out it does have a watermark and there is a link in the description that is my affiliate link that would help me out if you click that and take a look at it through there but Anyways, like I said, hopefully this helped you out. This program is super, super powerful. I'm going to be using it for all of my renders. I've already used it on quite a few of my, my previous ones, so you probably haven't even noticed. You've already seen some different results with that and weren't even knowing that it was being upscaled. So check out the other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about Houdini and Redshift, uh, as well as a took a, an inside look at this video AI, just a brief overview if you want to check that out, kind of similar to, to this video, just less, less detail, but it's more comparisons. So if there's something that you're trying to, to look into, then I would check out that video. I also have Patreon available if you want to grab the project files for pretty much all the stuff that I do, as well as the comparison video for this, this program. You can download all of my recent renders and you can throw them in here for yourself and test out the different settings for yourself and see which ones work, which ones don't, uh, and just kind of how, how well it does. Anyways, thank you all for watching and have a good day.